Hi, I'm Alan Burris, author of Survive a Shooting and Other Titles, and the Director of Training for Reflex Protect. I'm here to introduce Jason's talk with Chris Story, an Executive Protection Specialist, former Army Ranger, and an instructor with the prestigious ESI Bodyguard Academy. Now, when a bodyguard's client travels, the team conducts a systematic process of research, planning, and preparation to keep that client safe. Chris is going to walk us through ways to apply those methods to family safety while we're traveling with our kids. If you haven't yet, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. They help more than you know. And when the show's over, you can visit me at www.surviveanddefend.com to learn how to keep your family safe from the most dangerous of circumstances and how to enjoy life safely. Now, let's listen to Jason and Chris and learn how some advanced work can keep our family safe. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Safest Family on the Block, where knowledge is power. I'm your host, Jason, and joining us today is Chris Story. Hello, Chris. Hey, Jason. Thank you for having me. It's really a pleasure to have you on. Now, you sent me your bio, <laughs> which is, I'm going to read just the highlights of it in the interest of time. Chris Story is a Senior Protective Operations Instructor at Executive Security International and a Senior Specialist Course instructor, instructor for Enablement Advisors. He has over 25 years of experience managing, conducting, and consulting in protective security and intelligence operations in the military and as a civilian. He spent eight years in high-risk environments in various protective leadership roles and has evaluated security programs for high net worth individuals, corporations, and governments for security and effectiveness. He has helped to develop and deliver basic and advanced executive protection, surveillance detection, and high risk protection courses for government agencies, US military, foreign military, law enforcement, and civilians. He holds a BA in security management from American Military University, an MA in management and leadership from Liberty University, and an MBA from Keller School of Management. He proudly served for 14 years in the U.S. Army as a ranger, counterintelligence agent, and infantryman. And again, I, there's probably that much stuff, again, that's a little more technical that a hiring manager would want to know. But the bottom line is, you know your stuff, sir. So thank, thank you again. Well, at least whoever's on that resume sounds like they do, or that bio, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, much better you talking about it than me. Um, but yes, I, I do believe that I know my stuff uh, when it comes to security. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. And you've come on today to talk about advances. And yes. when I, I was really excited when you agreed to do that, but some of the people I told about it, the first thing they said when I said, I've got a guy coming on to talk about advances was, uh, what's an advance? So yeah. let's start there. What is an advance? Okay. So an advance is just, uh, in, in the basics of terms is understanding where you're going before you get there. I mean, essentially that's, that's what it is. And so, from an executive protection standpoint, we put we send people out to conduct advances, which would mean going to do a site survey and understanding the ins, the outs, all the little places that can either hurt you, help you, uh, when you get to either a country, a venue, whatever that case might be. And those are the, the advance is part of the success for use it as three pillars of success for executive protection operations, which are you know planning um advances and then arrivals and departures so it, it is one of the keys to success in almost any any planning uh, any any operation especially if you're a parent trying to figure out you know where you're going what what's happening and and how uh those things on the ground they can hurt you confuse you uh or or make make you and your, your family happy so it just just gives you a an idea of where you're going before you get there now, most people who watch the show, most you know, middle-aged, middle-class parents, we encounter bodyguards in the movies, and we see the you know the shoot 'em up, beat 'em up stuff. The one movie I can think of that gives a slight example of this is that older movie, In the Line of Fire, where you have just mm -hmm. a, a little montage of the Secret Secu Secret Service in there with uh, scanning the walls for bombs and talking to folks. So that kind of gives a for folks who taking information based on what they've seen. That's, that's the only right. example I can think of. Yeah. Now, 
most parents don't have a billion dollar budget to go hire six professionals to go to uh, Puerto Vallarta or Bangkok a week ahead of time when we travel with our kids. Right. But I imagine there are some aspects of advanced work basics and essentials that parents could use to make sure to make the uh, the vacation not just safer but more enjoyable. Yeah, so I mean, I think back in the back in the day, you, you'd have to do, you know, look at your map and you kind of go by Braille and you get on the ground or you hear from people and they draw a map out for you and they'd mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, if you get on this road past the third tree on the left, you'll see an old cow and this is, you know, you know, from a direction standpoint, that's where you're going. But uh, with the information age, you can really do a lot of your advanced work from afar, and I, and I would say probably. A lot of people do the same thing when they're, you know, going to the movies to see what time it starts. You know, they understand where they're going. They understand how to, uh, as uh, the girlfriend would say, nab it to get there, right? So uh, we all do little forms of advances in, in our daily lives for the most part. Um, there are just certain ways that you can do to prepare, to better prepare for your, your arrival to understand more about where you're going, right? So. Uh, when you go and check out Yelp, it tells you what the service is like, or it tells you what the location looks like, or what what you should be walking into when you when you uh, arrive at whatever hotel or venue that you go to. Um, all those things are forms of advantage. You just kind of put them together to to meet your needs. Uh, we kind of focus on first off is uh, uh, logistics. Usually, there's two sides of every advance: is logistics and safety. So, logistics: how do I get there? What support do I have? Um, uh, what support, what I need, what do I need to plan for? And then the safety or security piece, which is, you know, what is the overall environment like um, from, a, from a crime aspect? Uh, what, what can, you know, who is there that, that might bring risk to, to my, my location, right? If there's like, like, let's say there's a, you know, you're going to have a family event with, uh, you know, your, your three and four year old, but there's a, uh, you know, an, an urban uh, music festival. Okay, that might be that might be a clash of, of what your expectations are. Um, uh, so so again, you understand what what risks are in the area that that might might pose a risk to you and your operation, and then you just kind of go from there. Danny, yeah, it reminds you a bit. I I spent a little more than a year in my in Malaysia with my family just so my kids could experience living abroad. And one of the things that we used was Google Google Earth. And I can't tell you how often just having a little bit of a sense of what the buildings looked like when we were trying to get to this tourist attraction of that museum helped me to make the right turn and also helped me be just a little more aware of my environment because I wasn't that stressed about the navigation. So would that right. be an example of, of the kind of advanced work? Yeah, that's a perfect example. You Google, Google Earth, mm -hmm. Google Maps, understanding where you're nearest. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're traveling overseas, where the nearest embassy is, the nearest U.S. consulate, mm -hmm. or if it, that's too far away, the nearest mm -hmm. friendly consulate, uh, where hospitals are and levels mm -hmm. of care in each hospital, mm -hmm. all of those things help you have a better understanding and a better comfort level uh, from an advanced standpoint so you can enjoy your vacation from a family aspect, or at least you know you're mm -hmm. safe, uh, you're secure, and then you can really focus on, on all those things that you need to have fun. So we kind of look at it as a safety net or a safety layer um to underline all those things so because you really wouldn't want to go have a, you know plan to have a great time have an accident mishap or 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 worse and then not know where the nearest local police station was or not know where the nearest hospital was or, or mm -hmm. add all those stressors that so those, having those underlying mm -hmm. factors already taken care of usually uh lends a, a little bit of like you talked about confidence in that great all this stuff taken care of i can work on uh, having fun and enjoying time with my family and, you know, kind of being present in the area. Another example of that is 911 is not universally the emergency Correct. services number. Correct. Right. Yeah. So just, again, knowing mm -hmm. that up front is helpful that way when you're, you know, in the UK mm -hmm. and you're dialing 911 mm -hmm. and it's not working for you, you, you have an understanding of exactly mm -hmm. what that is. And, and just really communicating that uh, mm -hmm. with your family members as you go uh, or prepare to go on vacation. You don't have to get too crazy about it like a security professional would, you know, giving a PowerPoint briefing, et cetera. But mm -hmm. it would uh, it would help that everybody's on the same sheet of music and gives everybody that confidence uh, and then allows those folks to go enjoy, uh, to kind of focus on on what the 
whole purpose of the trip is, which is hopefully to have fun. Now, when you get, get involved in performing in advance, you've got staff, you've got a supporting agency, and at this point in your career, most likely contacts, local contacts who can help you out as well. Yeah. These are not resources that parents have. Uh, what are some places that we can find good information uh, you know, from our home office when we're planning a trip? Oh, too easy. Uh, first off, you know, the good old internet is helpful, right? <laughs> Friends and family that have traveled. And then of course, you know, you can get a lot of information from just from the hotels that you're, that you're looking to go to. Um, they can give you an abundance of information of, you know, I would say traveling with small children. I, I want to know, okay, as soon as we get there, where are the bathrooms, right? I mean, that's helpful, right? Uh, mm -hmm. what, what attractions do you have for children along the way and, and hotels that you travel to and travel agents and, and even, even books mm -hmm. like, uh, like Lonely Planet, depending on how far you're going, you mentioned Malaysia, you know, you, you might not find a whole lot of people that are going to Malaysia to understand, um, you know, you might have the neighbor that went to Malaysia to get that first hand view, but uh, going to the State Department uh, website and understanding, you know, what the, what the, at least from a country aspect, uh, are risks and threats and things you need to be aware of there and prime statistics. Mm -hmm. All those give you a general overview. Uh, but, but the unfortunate piece of that is that that gives you the threat level for the entire country. It might not just be specific uh, states or cities. So I would say buyer beware. It might not be, the risk might not be as great as, as it's uh, pertained to be. Um, there are a bunch of other tools out there. There's, there's a great other tool that just coming on the market. It's called uh, Safe Esteem. And it just really focuses on the risk that, that the individual might face in the city that they go to. And it really talks about three things, crime, um, uh, and then adding COVID to it, but crime, um, accidents, and sickness, right? So what three thing, areas do I need to focus on? You know, from my area that I'm living in, and then is there an increase in risk or a decrease in risk? And really in those three areas helps you identify where to focus, right? So most focuses, uh, especially from the U.S., you're, you can actually travel to a U.S. city and be in more danger than you would going overseas, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it helps you understand that, and then it helps you you know, based on those three categories, it helps you identify um, what you should be most concerned about. So I, 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 we talked about hospitals before, you know, if you're going to, you know, uh, you know, random South American country, they might have the best hospital system. And that might, be, there might be an increased risk if you get hurt, and then you go to the hospital system. So it just helps you prepare along those routes and understand, you know, what it is that you should be prepared for rather than crime is, you know, it's the scariest environment imaginable because that's not what we're trying to focus on. We're truly trying to focus on where can we go, have a good time and, uh, and, and take these unknown risks and make them known and then deal with them and then and, and have, or have a way to deal with them and then move on. And that, that site was Safe Esteem? Yeah, Safe Esteem. It's a safe dash esteem. All right. I will absolutely put the URL in the show notes, everybody. That sounds yeah, tool. like an amazing thing. Excellent. And so then we've got, as we said, that research from home towards, the, mm -hmm. towards your destination. You mentioned the mm -hmm. hotel, the concierge or the manager or just someone on duty. Mm -hmm. uh, as we get there, so an advanced team would go ahead of time, a week ahead of time, a few days ahead of time and scout the ground, mm -hmm. check the places they identified might be dangerous even looking into things like routes and drive that route with an eye for where an ambush might happen, that sort of thing. You yes. know, I clearly can't leave a week, <laughs> leave a week ahead of time and go do that. Even if I have right. that level of skills and um, experience, but what are some things that a parent could do? You know, you get on the ground, you get to the hotel, you put the wife and kids in there to rest, watch a little TV, recover from the flight, and then take a couple of hours just to, scout around maybe what, what would be some mm -hmm. of the, the best uses of those hours well so the first thing i would do is exits and entrances in the uh in the hotel right mm -hmm. how do i get in how do i get out get myself familiar with emergency exits so that again when i'm woken up in the middle of the night i'm not trying to figure it out i have an mm -hmm. understanding of what that looks like uh the next thing i would do is uh once i knew where the police station was and the mm -hmm. uh hospitals were in the area uh, and i can do that again remotely uh, I'd start to walk around the area to get familiar with it. You know, I like to get lost or at least give a couple mm -hmm. blocks, find some 
uh, primary and alternate routes to get to the uh, whatever venues or locations I'm going mm -hmm. to, at least, you know, for the next couple of days. So I have an understanding of where I am. I get an understanding of the environment and mm -hmm. what it feels like. Um, so that, I'm, again, it's not a surprise to me. You'd be surprised how many people walk, go through with blinders mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, just where they are. They're just enjoying it so much that they're not aware mm -hmm. of their surroundings, right? Uh, and then I would talk to the hotel about where the stay away from areas. You know, where do you want to go and where do you want to stay away from? And uh, understand what, what maybe uh, any incidents that have happened in the past and, and, you know, how to prevent those. A lot of times, we get targeted because we look like we're Americans or we look like we're tourists. So we wanna be able to understand how to blend in, um, have a good time, but uh, also know how to stand out as a target. And uh, that's not fear-based, it's just really the uh, uh, options for us to, to have a good time. I would say, for example, if you talk to people about going to Brazil, which is historically a, you know, very beautiful country to go to, but historically high crime, um, what does that mean? You know, are people dying in the streets every day? No, they're just getting robbed. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so watch your stuff. You know, don't mm -hmm. uh, understand the environment you get into. Uh, Brazil is a great example of uh, it's not, it's not very, it's not um, high mortality unless you go to a favela and you're dealing drugs, right? I mean, that, those mm -hmm. are the behaviors that get you there. But you will uh, lose your stuff if you just set it down mm -hmm. and and act like yeah. uh, like you're in the states because. People want to want you know. There are a lot of opportunities that will just as soon as you put your phone down and look away to order, uh, your phone will be gone or your purse will be gone. So you just need to have an understanding of what the atmosphere is, um, what other people are doing, what other people look like, and then try to emulate those uh, those behaviors. That also sounds like a good opportunity to establish baseline. One of the things that we've discovered in the various interviews, because this show talks about security issues like what we're talking about, but also suicide prevention and internet safety and every aspect of safety we can. And one of the common things every expert has said is about behavior isn't as important as changes in behavior. And so you get a sense for what it feels like on the street, how people act, how people move, and then you can then spot when that's different, which is one of your first yes. early warning signs that trouble's brewing. Absolutely, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really the reason for walking around and understanding mm -hmm. and getting a feel for what's around you is so that you can understand that baseline and then understand mm -hmm. changes from that. And those, some of those changes might be you, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're walking in a way or a manner or dressed mm -hmm. in a way or a manner that you're the one who mm -hmm. sticks out, you might be the one that, that's, that's rising above or below the baseline. Mm -hmm. So you want to understand what that baseline is and then just work within that. Mm -hmm. And then, then like, you, like you said, and to reiterate, what what falls above below that baseline that would attract my attention to um you know at least at least key my instincts right if something's attracting my attention i should probably pay attention to it in one way shape or the other that way i can either confirm or deny that it that it's an issue and i apologize can you hear my my bulldog is snoring next to me so if you can hear it, i apologize <laughs> not even a worry but i'm okay. expecting my kid to wake up and come running into the room any minute uh, it yeah, happens that's how it works yeah Wow. Okay. So we walk, we get there, you know, we've done our, as much work as we can before leaving home. We get there, we check mm -hmm. into the hotel who we've talked to before we arrived. We've taken mm -hmm. an hour to just kind of scout the area while everybody's relaxing and recovering it, or maybe do it as an, in tandem where, you know, dad does it for an hour and then comes and takes a break while mom does it for an hour. So both parents have that sense of what's going on and can back each other up because of course being on vacation is fatiguing and distracting so neither right. of us is going to be operating at 100 percent. the stress of yeah. the travel alone mm -hmm. can crush souls know <laughs> 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 what you're doing yeah. especially when you've got to, you know between two and four tiny drunk adults running around with you for whom you are responsible <laughs> exactly yeah exactly yeah so we've got that situation as we go out into the world, of course, we're going to be walking, going to places that we haven't had an opportunity to scout yet. You know, a good protection specialist isn't going to go anywhere blind on purpose. Mm -hmm. But I imagine that in your career, that's happened to you once or twice. What are some things you can do really quickly when we enter a place for the first time to you know, scout the situation? I mean, entrances and exits, obviously, but beyond that, yep. what are some of the things we should look out for, pay attention to, maybe keep as a mental checklist? 
Well, so first off, it's it's usually men, um, entrances, exits, restrooms, and then safe areas, right? So mm -hmm. the the entrance exits piece are, are pretty. That's a pretty easy one, right? You know, mm -hmm. here's the main entrance I'm coming into. What other exits are are listed, mm -hmm. and then and then are they locked? That that could be a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on what country you go to, they don't have to be. They don't have the same code mm -hmm. as in the U.S., so they could be locked. So just checking those mm -hmm. is helpful. Uh, understanding where restrooms are, those are helpful as well because not only, you know, if you have the four little uh, gremlins running around, do, do one of them or all of them have to go to the restroom at the same time, uh, usually at the most inopportune time. So you need to know where the restroom is, but also you can use the restroom as a safe room. So most restrooms uh, are have um, built out to support the plumbing. Uh, so there's extra protection there. And most of them are one way in, one way out. So you can, you know, with a deadbolt or something, you could use to block the door in the event of an emergency. So that's where you want to understand where those are. Uh, and then, of course, you just talked about that baseline, right? As you're walking in, is there anybody that's standing around? Is there anybody that, that doesn't fit? Is there anybody that's, you know, overly friendly that doesn't work there or, or that's, you know, basically eyeing customers as they walk in, wherever that might be? Um, those are just normal street sense things that almost everybody's going to do, but that, well, everybody should do, but that professionals are paid to do and understand what risk can impact their clients um biggest thing is is that you know go back to that arrivals and departures piece you still need to be aware of what's going on when you leave your hotel when you go back to your hotel um, because those are known locations right uh, especially tourist locations are, are also known locations you go to a hotel on vacation likely you're gonna you're gonna visit one or many of uh tourist locations so you know folks hang out there to take advantage of of, uh, of people who are coming in to to uh enjoy their city or their their city's venues and it becomes a it can become a, a target for opportunistic uh crime if you will or, or intervention so just having an, just mm -hmm. having an, a modicum of awareness can help prevent you from becoming mm -hmm. a target right just being aware mm -hmm. would be helpful so those are the things that i would look at as i you know go into mm -hmm. an unknown and uh make it known absorb it really quickly and then feel confident about where i'm going and what i'm doing Outstanding. And you, you mentioned about American tourists, especially being targets, and it helps to remember that we, A, are, even a middle class family is unbelievably wealthy in two thirds of the world. Right. And also there's just the, the real calculus of, I'm not going to fly back to testify over a $200 camera. Right. Right. So we're, we're high, high reward and low risk for a lot of people in tourist areas in some countries and just being aware of that. And as you mentioned before, in a lot of the case, it's going to be property crime. It's not going to be violent crime. There are right. obviously exceptions to that. And some of the resources you mentioned will tell us, but most of the time it's keeping an eye on our kids, making sure they don't get into accidents, which is I think another important thing that a lot of folks don't think about. I'm sure that when you're responsible for the safety of somebody, you're not only looking for the possibility of an attack, but you're also, checking out whether the safety rails are just spec on that volcano hike he wants to do. Right. <laughs> right. What are, what are some, what are some tricks things, that? Right. Well, yeah. I mean, again, you know, as a, as a paid protector, you're, mm -hmm. and I would say that parents are paid protectors as well. Right. I mean, those mm -hmm. are your, those are your assets that you're, that you're focusing on, but uh, you're, you're preventing uh, from uh, intentional harm, which would be assassination or kidnapping. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And unintentional harm, which is injury or, accidents like you talk about and then of course mm -hmm. you have embarrassment schedule and brand but um you know from a parental parental aspect you want to understand like hey that that cool hike might be super awesome right but like you mm -hmm. talked about um risk might be something that is not necessarily focused on from from whatever that vendor is doing right i mean so you you know have mm -hmm. to understand what that looks like with uh protectors we put a lot of safety nets in place you go check it out, you go see what the risks are, you go do the hike beforehand, and then you kind of make a decision on whether or not, you know, you would recommend doing it. And then if it's a go and you would say, and you want to say no, but it's going to be a go because your client wants to experience it, then what safety nets do you put in place to make sure that, that if something does happen, um, you're prepared for it, right? And again, that goes back to understanding where the hospitals are. Uh, well, actually, initially having med kits that, that support, can support whatever, um, injuries, at least until you get to a place of uh, 
higher care, where that place of higher care is, how long it takes to get there. You know, all those things that you need to have or worry about in order to, uh, to do those higher risk, um, which may not really be high risk, but it's high risk because it's that rusty rail that you talked about, right? So uh, uh, you just have to have safety nets in place in order to accomplish those things. And I think another thing more from a parental standpoint is what my wife calls my dad goggles, where it's, we're going to get to the top of this mountain, damn it, because we'd set mm-hmm. the goal and we're right. tired and we're cranky and, but we're start, we're losing sight of the real goal, which is that fun with the family. And of right. course that higher goal of making sure that the family gets down the mountain safe. And right. to, now I know the one of the rules simple I, things like water, right? Like carrying yeah. water or, or everybody has, you know, mm-hmm. everybody's somewhat self-sustaining and, mm-hmm. and, you know, there are plenty of creative ways to dad to, for dad to get his goals, or at least at least mm-hmm. set the halfway goal, and then okay, you guys stay here. I'll hit the top of the mountain, take some mm-hmm. photos. We'll Photoshop everybody in, and then we'll come back down. <laughs> you know? And having that plan, I'm sure that that's part of uh, you know, the professional aspect where you think ahead of time about if this is a situation that might get rough, if this is a situation that might even just threaten the schedule. These are the circumstances under which we're going to call a halt and turn around and go home right and right. because all of us are smarter sitting around a table just after dinner than we are in the middle of whatever adventure we're having right in and the moment then, yeah, and then trusting that person who made the plan because they are smarter than us well, of course <laughs> right so well we need to make sure that that you know that that's a great uh that's a great point is 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 make sure that you know, when we realize that it's mm-hmm. it's kind of beyond our control, and maybe it's mm-hmm. maybe it's a better idea to to, to attack it at mm-hmm. another day. You know, uh, the other thing is like we talked about putting those safety nets in place. So if there's some um, mm-hmm. unanticipated issue, right? Like even just the small mm-hmm. emergency blankets that don't take up much room. You mm-hmm. put one everybody's little backpack. Everybody has fluids. You know, there mm-hmm. are plenty of things that we just say, all right, we're here. We've done all the. We've come all this way. There's no reason to turn back now. And you're like, yeah, but nobody has water. You know, like, ah, oh, yeah. we're fine. You know, it'll just be a, it'll be a one mm-hmm. and a half hour hike, and it never really works out that way. So, so mm-hmm. again, thinking ahead to what you're going to need, mm-hmm. and then think ahead to what you might need in the event of an emergency, can be helpful. And it really takes mm-hmm. just another ten or fifteen minutes, and maybe a little bit more of uh, maybe a stop at the grocery store on the way up to make sure that you do have water, mm-hmm. um, or do have toilet paper, or something simple like that that mm-hmm. that can help make the time. Uh, more enjoyable without um, without over over stressing it, like without overcooking the plan, as I like to say. Um, and then again, just having the small emergency kits, first aid, uh, insect repellent, you know, sunscreen, all those things that mm-hmm. that can uh, can have an impact on on your on your vacation or whatever it is that you're doing. And those are really small items that that everybody can carry uh, individually. Today's episode is brought to you by Corobia Martial Arts Supply. If you're a serious martial artist and you're tired of paying premium prices for high-end Japanese gear, Kurobia has your back. Kurobia was founded by a black belt expat for black belts worldwide. They carry a full range of geese from Hirota, Tokaido, and Tokyo-do International, as well as bags and books and other training supplies. They made my third Don black belt back in 2002, the one I still wear to this day, and they've only gotten better since then. Use coupon code SAFEFAM to get 10% off your first order at Corobia.com. They're a good company run by good people that offers good products at good value. Please do check them out. That's Corobia.com. K-U-R-O-O-B-I-Y-A.com. Tell them Safest Family on the Block sent you. I imagine that at a professional aspect, when you begin the work, there's a binder. I, I, I picture a three ring binder with a bunch of checklists. Oh yeah. 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 There's a, there, there, there are a ton of, you got checklists for checklists, you know, do you have mm-hmm. this checklist? You know, there's a running mm-hmm. joke that the secret service uh, uh, advance for a hotel is uh, about 40 pages. Right. So that's just for the, <laughs> just for one hotel that they might stay at at their, uh, mm-hmm. you know, on a trip. So, you have multiple checklists just to make sure you don't forget mm-hmm. anything. And, and each checklist works for, you know, what works for you might not work for me, depending on our level of preparedness. Um, there are some things that just in your basic kit that you might have every day in a backpack that you throw over your shoulder, you know, a, a go bag or whatever that you throw up there um, as you go on a hike. So um, checklists are helpful. 
they're you know people say that they're you know automated checklists but then you forget something right mm -hmm. and, uh, i always go back to saying hey would you prefer your pilot fly without a checklist or yeah. or not you know he's a professional that's got 30 years and you still pretty much wanted to fly with the checklist so i mean who knows he got in a fight yeah who knows he got in a fight with his wife last night he's distracted right yeah. or he just got a text you know <laughs> from you know something random that he just missed it you know that checklist piece yeah. is there and you should share that checklist with your significant other because mm -hmm. they, that's the check and balance, right? Did we get mm -hmm. this? Did we get that? And then uh, that just helps make mm -hmm. sure that everybody has a peace of mind and doesn't have to worry about something. And you can't imagine how, how good it makes you feel is that if something does go wrong and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, yep, we have that, you know? Somebody mm -hmm. skinned their knee, yep, we have it. Somebody you know, had, a, had a larger cut, yep, we have that too. Somebody needs sunburn or insect repellent, yep, we have that, you know? So it's, it's mm -hmm. just helpful. And having all of those kits and all of those plans, again, set up ahead of time, which sounds like the kind of definition of the advance to get that Absolutely. stuff taken care of before you're in it. Absolutely. So, you, you know, mm -hmm. before you even mm -hmm. leave, you can make sure that those things are done. And Jimmy, Bobby, mm -hmm. Tommy and, and Gracie's kits are all, you know, they're mm -hmm. all little laid out in their backpacks and just have a small little foldable mm -hmm. uh, emergency kit, you know, with medication mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And it just goes with them everywhere they go. And. And that way everybody has something and they can be self-reliant and then, you know, kind of contribute to that, uh, that team effort as, as everybody's traveling. And there's no reason not to include the kids in the checklist process too about, Hey, John, do you have everything on this checklist in your pack? And that yep. you know, involves them, which, you know, kids love to help their parents you know, until oh, they're yeah. about 14, then it's a chore, but you know, when they're still kids, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, <laughs> but, they, but yeah. They, they really get into it, right? They almost mm -hmm. see, treat it as a scavenger hunt and, you know, oh, you're going to have to yeah. go get it. Okay. Where is it? You know, mm -hmm. and then they want to make sure that, that their, mm -hmm. that their little bag is, is, is packed appropriately. And I think, you know, just mm -hmm. it teaches them preparedness, awareness, and, and, uh, you know, self-reliance as well. Mm -hmm. And, I and think it leads by example. You know, yep. And that's getting us yeah. halfway there. Mm -hmm. Well, we've covered a lot of the, everything I thought of, but this is an area in which I'm profoundly ignorant. What, what haven't we talked about that's important to know about advances? Well, I think the biggest thing is, is, um, is that it isn't as hard as it sounds, right? I mean, we have talked about a lot of things and, mm -hmm. and really the more, the more involved you get, it's just more layers of, of understanding of, of what it is. And we wouldn't imagine parents would do it, but you know, when you go in, you're just like you talk about, let's say, are you going to take a helicopter tour, right? You want to see the safety records and the maintenance records of the, of the aircraft. And when was the last time the pilots had, had training and, you know, are there training, is there a license up to date? And is the insurance up to date for the helicopter? And, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And it's, it's layers and layers and layers. I would say what we've talked about today, if parents do that, just do that alone. It'll, it'll greatly uh, increase their peace of mind about what they're doing and where they're going. And it'll help them, you know, have, you know, little preparedness kits for everybody mm -hmm. and it'll help you immensely. And just having that taken care of makes you feel better about what you're doing. Um, as a personal, uh, you know, anecdote, I guess, if you will, uh, I was very prepared for, uh, you know, pre-COVID, I was very prepared for, you know, leaving and, and getting out if, if something happened, et cetera. And, and for the two days after I realized like this is a bug in, I, you know, we're going to stay in. Uh, I was extremely stressed out <laughs> because I wasn't prepared for that. And then once I was prepared, my, my, my uh, stress level went way down. Um, once I made the, you know, transitions in preparation for what I needed to do and my stress level went way down and I was, I was a happy camper. Um, but once I realized I, I wasn't ready for what, what I was facing or what, what I thought we were facing, uh, the stress level went way up until I, until I solved that problem. So I would say that constant evaluation of what you have, where you're going, how it can impact you and your impact on the environment itself um, will always help you be a better, uh, be better prepared for where you go. And then knowing before you go, I think that's some of my GI Joe say that like something like that, like knowing before you go or knowing's half the battle. Yeah. Anyways, Knowing you have to battle, right? So that, that really, really helps you understand or, or get a better understanding of, of uh, the environment you're going into. And it gives you a lot more confidence in, uh, in just performing uh, while you're down there, which helps you have, have just have a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. 
Now, I did think of one other subject, and this isn't, this isn't part of a traditional advanced work, I imagine, but just in your experience going out into other countries, how helpful has it been for you to learn maybe 30 to 50 words and phrases in the, in the language, the local language? Yeah, I would say, um, first off, Babel is an awesome tool. Just helps mm -hmm. you kind of learn those things, and I think we've mm -hmm. all done that. Um, I have a, from my personal experience, I think it's really good because the people on the ground have an appreciation, mm -hmm. even if you're murdering their language, they have an appreciation that mm -hmm. you at least made the attempt, uh, depending on where you are, you know, um, often as creatures of habit, you'll go have coffee at the same place and you'll be mm -hmm. able to try your French or Swahili or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mandarin at, at, at your local restaurant and, and they'll, you know, initially they're like, oh, and here we go, another tourist. But as you go back, you know, they'll have a greater appreciation for what you're doing. And I think it's a pretty good idea. Um, you know, simple things like help, uh, you know, greetings, bathrooms, you know, food, drink, things like that can be helpful in, in determining where you need, you know, where you need to go and how you need to go. And the other thing is, um, is again, that we call area familiarization and you spoke to it a bit earlier was about like route route analysis and route familiarization um we see it often and used to see it depending on some cities you know with uber or you know whatever level of transportation you're taking is you need to know where you're going um because you get in the if you get in the cab or tuk tuk or whatever and say hey here's the hotel and then you take a nap you might not find yourself in the place where you intended to go so mm -hmm. just being aware of where you go what you're doing and how mm -hmm. to communicate how to get there and how to communicate hey this isn't the right way stop pull over um, could be helpful as well and that's i'm glad you mentioned taxes because that's an example where knowing where you're where you're going can help you out because in my experience at least about half the cities in the world, the cabbies grew up there and know the town back and forth. And in the other half mm -hmm. of the cities, it's one of the easiest jobs for an immigrant to get, yes. meaning that all the cabbies have been in town for like two months. Right. <laughs> yep, exactly. And they, and they either use some sort mm -hmm. of mapping system or they don't, mm -hmm. and they're just kind of going by Braille. And you find that mm -hmm. out pretty quickly when you're like, hey, man, you're, you're not going the right way. And, mm -hmm. and oftentimes it's not nefarious. It's just they're taking you on a yeah. tour because they don't know where they're mm -hmm. going. But uh, you knowing where you're going and where you're supposed to go is helpful. Um, and I would, I would caution against over-relying on apps um, because they can fail, they can not work. Uh, just having an understanding of where you're going, uh, what the area looks like. You mentioned Google, Google Earth. That's super helpful in understanding, you know, you know, yep, I need to go up four streets, take a right, and I'll see this, this reference point. I'll know exactly where I am, and two streets to the east. And, and then take a left, which puts me north two blocks, and there's our hotel, right? So just understanding what that looks like can be very, very helpful, and you can deviate from that as well. And not for nothing, but uh, paper maps make great souvenirs. They do. <laughs> they, they, they do, and, and, and they're pretty easy to find and pretty right. cheap, and they're usually pretty accurate, or they're accurate enough mm -hmm. as to where you don't really have to worry about them being wrong, mm -hmm. you know? Um, nobody's going to print a map that's uh, completely off, whereas... Oftentimes with some of the apps, they just don't work and they'll route you in the wrong direction or they'll just never get you to where you, where you need to go because they're, they're confused themselves. So that, the map's really not going to lie to you. And you can download a lot of this your phone or take photos of them on your phone and you don't have to carry a bunch of crap around. Nice. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your knowledge, which you've earned the hard way, it looks like. Uh, and before we, uh, we go, I'd like, I've got two more questions for you. The first of which okay. is, Okay, what's the really smart question I should have asked you but didn't? Oh, I like that question. I always, uh, I always ask that. I try to ask that one myself. Um, but I think you, I think you really covered it. You know, I think um, as we, as we're wrapping, I did want to say one thing mm -hmm. is that um, phone numbers, right? You know, mm -hmm. your your phone may not work in the area that you go to, or it may, and you have to turn on international, whatever. Mm -hmm. But have all those phone numbers pre-planned in your phone so that you're not looking for you know, trying to Google the U.S. Mm. Embassy or the nearest medical facility or even mm. your hotel, have those in a, in a trip list mm. so you can find them immediately and uh, everybody mm. has those, right? Uh, and you share them. Um, do get on some, uh, you know, open source Facebook groups, travel groups, whatever, to ask people mm. what their experiences have been and how they can guide you left mm. and right. Uh, because like I said, maybe the person next door hasn't been in, been in Malaysia, but I'm sure you can find somebody that, that has that uh, 
that can give you some some uh, some great tips on how to travel you know um yeah. and then then of course have fun but Slide. uh mm -hmm. your, your question was were there any questions that was the smart question that i thought was coming did it ever come no i thought you did a great job and uh and there's nothing that I would have would have added earlier from a question yeah. standpoint. Hey, hey, you missed this one, you know, yeah. didn't happen. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> that means yeah. a lot. Yeah. And, and my final yeah, my final question is: is you're an instructor, you're a teacher, you I'm sure you've given large classes, small classes. In all that experience, is there a topic or something that is close to your heart that you just don't get enough chances to talk to people about? And if so, hold forth, sir. <laughs> no, well, I would say that you know, being an instructor, like you, you do get the chance to talk a lot about that, a lot about mm -hmm. all those things, I and mean, then oftentimes mm -hmm. you want to see people uh, become experts in in what they yeah. do. But really, you're just, you know, you're trying to give them the baseline foundation for for their experience uh, to build off of. And and protection is such a wide ranging, yeah. broad uh, uh, industry and field that. And one of the only ones that's impacted by your client, right? I mean, it's, besides, I always say that, you know, your client gets a vote and, and rarely in any other mm. field does that happen aside from babysitting, right? Where you're, mm. where you're like, hey, I'm going to take care of your kid. What would you like me to do, right? What are the do's and don'ts? Um, mm. You know, as a protector, your, uh, your principal gets a vote at about, you know, and it gets a say, you know? Um, it's weird because they don't do that with the plumber. But... <laughs> it is what it is. So there really isn't anything that I would that I would say that I, I really like to do. Of course, the more um, tactical aspects are always fun, right? But that's a different that's a different conversation. Um, but I would say that that again, those three pillars: planning, advances, and routes and departures. Um, those are the three that that if I had to drive home, those would be the ones that I would do. Right? Is to understand uh, what does my plan look like. How do I impact that plan with understanding uh, the area on the ground, so this advances, and there's being more aware in arrivals and departures, right? Mm -hmm. as, I, as I arrive to, to my location and as I depart my location, because that's where most, uh, most incidents happen because there are known locations. Uh, beyond that, um, I think that's covered, that pretty much covers it. Outstanding. And that, that really almost perfectly meshes situational awareness, even for something like a trip to Costco. Where you know you Absolutely. know the route, you know what you're doing there, you're paying attention, and then that arrivals departures, the place that you're in the most danger there is getting into and out of your car because yep. that's where you're a little distracted. That's where there's some motion that could cause what plausible deniability for somebody who's mm -hmm. approaching you. It won't draw as much attention, and so it sounds like it's the same thing that we're doing every day as parents, only in a slightly more structured, slightly more uh, systematic and broader scope and intentional yes. way than we usually do. Yeah, intentional. I was going to say purposeful, but yeah, intentional mm -hmm. covers it, right? And and oftentimes most, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I know most, not most, I know your listeners have a heightened sense of awareness and a heightened sense of security. That's why they, that's why they follow you. Um, but most people just kind of, they don't really see the end of their wind, beyond the end of their, the front of their bumper, right? I mean, what do people do when they, they roll up to a red light? Put on the brakes, grab the phone, stare at the phone until somebody mm -hmm. honks and tells them to move forward, right? So situational awareness is, is very important in, in just, just not looking like a target, right? If your head's in your phone all the time, someone's going to go, yep, I'm going to take your stuff from you because you're not paying attention. Um, and I think the situational awareness piece can help us get out of traffic jams. You know, it doesn't have to be security-based. It could be convenience-based, right? Oh, there's traffic ahead. I'm going to take a right here, skirt around it, and I'll be able to move on about my business rather than being frustrated about being stuck or whatever the case is. So just being just a little bit more aware than the, than the other person can help you live a, a more efficient, safer, more productive lifestyle. Excellent. Well, thank you again, Chris. I really appreciate you coming on today. Well, I appreciate it, uh, Jason. If there's anything else uh, you want to talk about, please let me know. It's a good time. That's outstanding. Thanks again. Thank you for watching today. I hope you found something useful or maybe even inspiring. If you liked what you saw, please take a few minutes to subscribe, like, and comment. Those little things add up to big help for the channel. If you loved it, consider checking out our Facebook page for more family safety news and information. 
And think about supporting us on Patreon, where you'll get early access, monthly training resources, blooper footage, and other exclusive benefits. You'll find links to both in the show notes. Most of all, thank you for being part of the Safest Family on the Block team. Stay safe, everybody. See you next time.